Hi everybody, welcome back to Lost Genre. This is a very special edition of Am I the A-Hole? In this video you will find my top 10 pick of Am I the A-Hole posts for the last 12 months that have an update. So let's not waste any more time in introductions and get started with the first story. This one is from user former escort 9642 I, 35 female, just got engaged. I've been with him for two years and he's amazing and think he'd be a great father to my children. There is, however, a secret I haven't revealed. About three years ago, before I met him, I briefly worked as an escort. It wasn't long, about four months, and I don't have some sob story about how I felt abused and exploited because, frankly, I didn't. Like any job, it had its good and bad parts. I don't have some dramatic story about escaping it. I stopped simply because I didn't want to do it anymore. I didn't require therapy or rehab. I just moved on and got a normal job. I have been regularly tested and have no STDs, nor do I have any emotional scars from it. So I told myself it's now no one else's business because it won't impact any other relationship. However, it feels wrong I can't share this. He once asked how many partners I had and I simply said a lot and told him technically the truth that I was prolific at one point in my life but no longer am and don't intend to do so. I'm still scared to potentially ruin a great thing if I reveal it but I'm also not looking forward to keeping this a secret for life. Am I the a-hole for not telling my fiance I used to work as an escort? Am I the a-hole for keeping it secret? Alright, and the community says, a-hole. Let's continue to the update now. So I thought of what everyone said and considered both sides. I decided that I didn't want this hanging over my head in our marriage. So it was tough, but shortly afterwards, one night I had a few glasses of wine and told him I had something I needed to talk about. I had considered seducing him, having passionate time and then telling him so I could at least do it one last time but decided that would be manipulative and dishonest. So I sat down and told him. When I said I had a lot of partners, it was over a stint of about 4 months as an escort. He was taken back a bit and said, that's not something I'd expect. I figured no one would. I dress modestly, I'm pretty conservative with drinking and I volunteer with the kids programs at my church. I had tears in my eyes and asked him if his opinion of me had changed. He said, well, what you did didn't stop you from being the woman I fell in love with, so why should it? I started crying more, tears of joy. I begged him to let me know if he had any apprehensions or questions of it had come between us in any way. He said he might have questions about any cool or sexy stories sometime, but not for now. He even made a quip about, no wonder you blow my mind in passionate time, you were a professional. Not really the type of joke I'd normally appreciate, but in that time it was perfect. And we ended up going to the bedroom not too much later. So now I feel like a huge weight has been lifted and I know just how much my fiancé loves me and what he's willing to tolerate in me. It's wonderful. We're both in lockdown basically now. Both working from home and I'm so thankful to be able to be with a wonderful and amazing man who I love so much and who loves me so much. Thanks to everyone. And there you go, she was able to tell him and get that weight off her shoulders and not having this hang over her head during the marriage and he accepted her the way she is with whatever she's done. Cool. So now let's move on to the next story. This one is from user I like good sleep. I, 15 female, live with my parents, mid 40s and my brother, 9 male. It's always been a dream of my parents to adopt. Me and bro are bio kids. And they have come to the decision that they want to adopt an older kid. They got matched with Jess, who is 13. Due to the current situation, she is not living with us, but we've met before and she spent a weekend with us in January. Jess, despite sometimes being sweet and kind, is very high maintenance and has a lot of anxiety and anger problems. She can go from zero to a thousand really quick. During her stay, she got triggered by something when we were in public. She and I went to a clothes shop and my parents were in a cafe nearby. Some guy accidentally grabbed her by her shoulder as he thought she was his daughter. 
and he apologized immediately. And she started screaming. I was the only person there and I tried to calm her down, but she ran off. She was found, shaken, but safe, an hour later. I then got grounded as I had failed in being responsible for my sister. I said I didn't have a sister. My parents were angry about this and said that how dare I be rude about her. Don't I know how much she's been through? She's had other outbursts, but none so huge in public. She can be cold and untrusting and was very clingy to my parents. I do admire her and think she's very brave, but I don't want to live with her. My parents call Jess often. I often say hi and try to be civil and supportive. But it seems like the only thing my parents can talk about is Jess and how brave she is and she isn't even here yet. We live in a three bedroom house and my parents promised to move to a bigger one later this year. Recently, my parent broke the news to me that Jess will move into my room and I can pick whether I want to share a room with bro or Jess. I don't want to share with either. My brother is messy, loud and is your average 9 year old boy and Jess has night terrors and screams the house down. And it's enough having to open my house to her but I value my privacy a lot and don't want her in my room which is like my special place. I was crushed. I asked if we were still moving and my parents were like we like this place and have no solid plan. I freaked out and was like, you guys are forgetting you have another daughter and are too excited about the shiny new one to remember that the one you have has feelings and boundaries. And if you are changing everything I've ever known, at least I deserve to be listened to. If this is how life's going to be, I don't want to have a sister. Good to note, my room is big enough to have a wall put in and my parents considered it a few years back. I would be happy with that. They refuse, even though we can easily afford it, because it is too much effort. My parents are offended that I'm not being welcoming towards my sister and I'm offended that the life I knew is going to be turned upside down. I am not going to have the thing I value most, my privacy. Am I the a-hole for not wanting my parents to adopt another teenage girl? And the community said, not the a-hole. So now let's continue with the update. This blew up, enough to reach Jess. She called me and we had a good heart to heart. She was unaware of the situation and felt really uncomfortable about it. We had a family meeting via Skype to explain to my parents why this was a bad idea and showed them some of the comments in this thread. They apologized and they said they would try to improve their behavior. We asked to put up a wall and they agreed. My father is currently watching a video on how to do it. <laughs> Jess also says hi to everyone and thanks you for looking out for her. And there you go, problem was properly solved. OP doesn't lose her privacy, Jess gets a new family, and the dad's learning how to put up a wall from a YouTube video. Okay, so now let's move on to the next story. This one's from user Likely a -hole. My husband Jake and I have been together for 6 years and he has been friends with Carly for two years longer than that. I suspect that Carly has feelings for Jake, but he has never had feelings for her. I've never been thrilled about their friendship, but I trust my husband and have total confidence that he would never cheat. A year ago, Carly moved into our neighborhood. She lives alone, and she picked up the habit of asking Jake to help her with housework and maintenance. When her water heater broke, she called Jake. When she needed help setting up a TV, she called Jake. When her trees needed trimming, she called Jake, etc, etc. You get the idea. Jake and Carly also work near each other downtown. And a few days a week, she'll ask him for a ride to work when she doesn't feel like driving. She's also started dropping by our house unannounced, usually when she's having a bad day and wants to vent to Jake about it. She relies on him heavily for emotional support 24-7. While I've tried to be patient and respectful of my husband's friendship with her, I have become less and less tolerant of Carly in the past few months as I feel she's become a constant presence in our marriage. The final straw came yesterday. As a medical worker, I've been pulling insane long hours at the hospital. Yesterday, I finally had a day off and I was very excited to spend some time with Jake, 
Just after breakfast, he received a text from Carly asking if he can help her move some furniture around because she decided to redecorate. He told her he can't because it's my day off and we're spending the day together. She then calls him and explains that it shouldn't take more than an hour and her living room is a mess and she really could use his help getting things in order. At this point, I snapped. I took the phone and told her that Jake had said no and she needs to respect that he wants to spend time with me, his wife. When she started to argue, I said, I'm sorry Carly, but I think it's time for you to find your own husband, and hung up. Jake was shocked and thought that I was far too harsh. He thinks that I should have some compassion and said, how would you feel if you were 35 and alone and without many friends? I feel sorry for her. At that, I questioned whether or not I was actually in the wrong here. Reddit, am I the a-hole for reminding my husband's female friend that my husband is my husband and not hers? And the community says, everybody sucks here. So now let's move on to the update. Jake and I drank some wine and had a long talk about Carly. We both apologized. I said I was sorry for making a harsh comment to Carly and he apologized for making me feel like he sometimes prioritizes her needs over mine. He said I will always be his number one priority and moving forward he will make that extra, extra, extra clear to Carly. He said that he should have set boundaries long ago and that Carly needs to learn to be less dependent on him. After that, we drank more wine and went through the comments on this post. We had a lot of laughs, plenty of things we agreed and disagreed with, and a lot of eye rolls. Reddit, you never fail to entertain. After further discussion, Jake decided to give Carly a call. I apologized for my comment and then I gave the phone to Jake and left the room so they could talk. I didn't hear the conversation, but according to Jake, it did not go well. Carly was upset and defensive when Jake told her she was in the wrong for arguing after he and I had both told her no about the furniture moving issue. She didn't think she had crossed any lines and she told Jake that I was being too sensitive, controlling and that I'm trying to end their friendship. Jake defended me and said it was his own idea to set boundaries and that I've never told him to stop being friends with her. They were both upset when the conversation ended. Thank you all for your thoughtful comments and insights. We sincerely appreciate it, except for those of you who commented that Jake must be cheating on me. Y'all are the biggest a-holes here. For the record, after reading the comments, Jake and I would both vote Everybody Sucks Here on my post. And there you go. OP sucks because she was harsh. Carly definitely sucks, no need to explain. And the husband sucks as well for not setting any boundaries. So everybody sucks. All right, so now let's move on to the next post. This one is from user Macacaralo. Okay, this is the worst. I'm losing sleep over this. I'm getting married in a week to an awesome woman and I cannot wait to be her husband. We are so excited. My brother is gay, but my family doesn't know. Only me and my parents know. I come from a very old school traditional family. So the old part of the family, grandparents and some aunts and uncles, still have last century's mind and the younger portion Cousins and siblings are open-minded and are living in the present. So my brother has been dating his boyfriend for six months now. The dude is great. I'm so happy my brother found a great guy, but it's kind of a secret and he hasn't told my family he is gay. I've been telling him for years that he should come out because I know it stresses him a lot and I think it will make him feel better not to hide anymore. Plus, I bet a few family members already know anyway. But he disagrees because he knows that part of the family won't accept it and it will be a lot of drama. I see the opposite. I see it as the sooner you know who the idiots are, the sooner we can cut them from our lives. I have no interest in having someone in my life that doesn't accept my brother being gay. Anyway, that's his decision, not mine. So for now, he won't say anything. Until a few weeks ago when he said he wants to bring his boyfriend to my wedding. I was not expecting that to be honest, so he went from 0 to 100 pretty fast. If it was any other occasion, I would be supportive, obviously, but I don't think my wedding day is the day to do that. Imagine all the drama and gossip and BS that would happen. 
and I don't want to get the attention away from my fiance. That's her day. And I don't want to have to worry about that on my wedding day and I think it's a pretty good reason. I asked him why my wedding day. He said it's because he wants to celebrate love with the two people he loves the most. Me and his boyfriend. This is killing me. I would fight my whole family for my brother and never speak to them again if I had to. But my wedding day is supposed to be a celebration, not a family fight, and I can't do this to my wife. That might ruin our future. I didn't even tell her, and she's already stressed out. Don't want to make it even worse. With a heavy heart, I asked him to please come alone to the wedding and that I hope he understands me. He started crying and left my house without saying anything. Next day, I got a text and he said, don't worry, going alone. I tried calling him but he didn't answer me and my parents don't seem to know what's happening because they didn't say anything. He eventually called me back a few days later. We spoke. He said he understands my side but things are still pretty weird between us. This is the worst situation of my life. Am I the a-hole for handling it the way I did? Am I the a-hole for asking my brother to not bring his boyfriend to my wedding? The community says, not the a-hole. So let's move on to the update. Spoke to fiance. Couldn't keep this from her anymore. She agreed with me. Clarification. I know it won't be my brother that would cause trouble. The trouble would start with remarks and looks from some aunt or uncle. Doesn't matter. We are spending a lot of money on this wedding. Planned it for a long time. My fiance put her heart and soul into planning this wedding. I don't want to see my bride or mom crying or some idiot uncle insulting my brother. Literally every other day of my life I will support my brother's decision to come out. Even at the wedding. I would obviously defend him. But the point is, not at the wedding. Also, my brother is not the a-hole. Not at all. I totally agree. OP is not the a-hole. I do think it's great that the brother finally is ready to open up and, you know, come out to his whole family. I just don't think at his brother's wedding is the right place to do it. Okay then, now let's move on to the next story. This one's from user, he was bear food. Backstory. A few months ago, my cousin, who I am close to, had a big co-ed baby shower thrown for her. I was in assistance along with my husband. Another cousin was visiting her parents, my aunt and uncle, and decided to attend the baby shower as well. I'm not close with this cousin at all. We didn't grow up together and are 10 years apart in age. We are obligatory Facebook friends though, mostly due to my aunt and mother asking us both to add each other. Skip ahead to present day. A few days ago, I got a call from a bank I have a credit card through, inquiring about my balance not being paid, as I have always paid my outstanding bills on time. I told the bank employee I had not used my card, so the charge was fraud. The card account was immediately closed, and they began the process of looking further into it. Today, they called me back with an update. The charge was for a donation to a charity that I knew of but have never contributed to myself. Still confused about why my card was used, I posted a short rant on Facebook. I got a few replies telling me this had never happened to them and hoping it got all resolved soon. Then my younger non-pregnant cousin commented something to the effect of, well, maybe someone had a good reason for making the donation in your name. Maybe someone wanted to teach you a lesson. The comment was weird, so I PM'd her to ask what she meant. At first she wouldn't tell me what she meant, but eventually I got her to tell me everything. She used my credit card to make a donation. Her reason? Because about a year ago I began going to church. I didn't grow up in a religious family. I'm not vocal about my newfound beliefs. I don't throw it in people's faces or demand they believe the same. It's just something that I like for my own life. It makes me feel better and more relaxed. Apparently, my cousin has a problem with me deciding to attend and join a church of any kind. And because of that, she decided it was a good idea to sneak around and take photos of my credit card and then use the info to make a thousand dollar donation to a local organization she knew I would never donate to because they're very outspoken about opposing what I believe morally. My husband says I should press charges and have her arrested. 
My mom says that's going too far, even though my cousin was in the wrong because she's only 19. So, would I be the a-hole for pressing charges on my cousin and possibly ruining her life? Would I be the a-hole for having my cousin arrested? Edit. The organization is not anti-gay or anything like that. It's not PP either. FYI, I'm a gay male who is pro-choice, so stop assuming I'm some kind of intolerant lunatic. Alright, and the community says, not the a-hole. Now let's continue with the update. The bank is proceeding with legal action. She's being held accountable by them. I'm still undecided about what I want to do personally. She was arrested, charged, then released with an ankle monitor due to overcrowding and it being a non-violent offense. So she can go to her part-time job, the grocery and home until her trial. After that, I don't know what will happen. The bank is definitely suing her. The detective assigned to the case is in the process of finding out if anyone else has been a victim of her thievery. As of right now, things are slowly going forward, but I don't know when the actual trial will be. It might be a while. I don't think OP would be the a-hole if he would press charges on his cousin. She did something stupid and she should be held accountable. You don't go around stealing other people's credit cards to teach them a lesson. Who does she think she is? Does she have this stupid moral high ground that she believes she's better than other people just because of the way she thinks? That's idiotic. But that's just my opinion. In any case, we need to keep moving forward because we still have five more posts to go. Now let's continue to the next story. This one is from user Shush Movie. My sister's 20 female boyfriend, Derek, 20 male, has been staying at our house since March. It has honestly been one of the worst things about never being able to leave the house. I, 16 female, didn't even meet him before my parents allowed him to stay with us. They met him when they visited her at college. He's really effing grating. Always thinks he's the smartest person in the room and is honestly just annoying AF. He is not polite, never offers to do any chores or dishes or anything. Just a complete loser. I don't get what my sister sees in him. Usually, when I would watch something with my mom and dad, we would all kind of make comments about what was happening or whatever. But early on during his stay, Derek said this was too distracting and he needs to focus. I vented a little to my mom about Derek, including his need for dead silence when watching TV, and she said that she understood that it was frustrating, but that we needed to make him comfortable as a guest. It was all good until last night. We were watching Molly's game and I was enjoying it. Maybe an hour in, during a transition from one scene to another, I asked my dad to pause it so I could go to the bathroom. And immediately after, Derek looks at me, puts his finger over his mouth and literally loudly shushes me like I'm a two-year-old for just asking to pause the movie. I got beyond upset and was like, F this, I'm not watching the movie with him. I just effing can't do it. Maybe it wasn't exactly that, I don't remember because I was so angry, but it was something like that. I didn't personally insult him though. My mom calls after me, but I just go to the bathroom and then my room. My sister texted me that I was behaving like an effing bee. I texted her back that her boyfriend was an effing tool. My mom came into my room later and said that she understood why I felt the way I felt, but that I needed to apologize to Derek. I said I wouldn't because I don't think I did anything wrong. Anyway, now I'm in bed and dreading facing them, so I probably won't leave my room all day, but I need to know if am I the a-hole for refusing to finish watching a movie after my sister's boyfriend shushed me? And the community says, not the a-hole. I totally agree. Now, let's move on with the updates. I didn't apologize and things got worse. A couple of hours ago, I went to get breakfast and saw Derek in the hallway. I kind of glared at him and he went back into my sister's room. My sister then came out and started yelling at me about how I'm making him uncomfortable. I basically told her everything I said here about him being lazy and rude. My mom and dad heard us yelling and came down and my sister threatened that she and him would leave to go to his mom's house, which is a long drive away. I told her to leave and my mom started crying. My dad told us both to shut the F up and now I'm in my room. 
Great morning so far. I hope she effing leaves. Update 2. Thanks for all the comments. I appreciate the majority of people saying I'm not the a-hole. My sister told my mom, who told me, I know, very mature, that if I don't apologize, they'll leave this weekend. My mom practically begged me to apologize and my dad told me if I didn't apologize, I would be in big trouble. But I'm not threatened by that at all because what the F is he gonna do? Ground me? Lol. I'm never going to apologize. I'm so mad at my parents for falling for my sister's obvious manipulative BS. If she wants to leave, she should just effing do it instead of just threatening to do it. Update 3. I don't know if anyone will read this, but my sister and Derek left early this morning. Derek and I didn't talk directly since the night everything started. My sister was like, are you really not going to apologize? And I said that I had nothing to be sorry for and that obviously it was her choice whether to leave or stay. She said that Derek didn't want to walk on eggshells around me and I said that that was what I was doing for two months so I didn't have much sympathy. She was mad at that. My mom and dad both tried to guilt me into apologizing. My mom even said that if my sister got sick after leaving, it would be my fault. But again, my sister is choosing to leave so it can't be my fault. My dad was like, just do it for your mom. And I was like, no, if Derek wants to talk about it, I'm fine with that, but I'm not going to apologize. So they left. Honestly, I'm surprised that my sister actually followed through because usually she's all talk, but I'm happy with it. My mom was crying all day and she's not talking to me. I feel bad for her, but I really just couldn't do it anymore. Not really a happy ending, but whatever. I agree with OP. If she has to walk on eggshells because of the guest, no, no, no. If you're living in a house for two months, you're not a guest. So you better carry your own weight and contribute to the household. Washing dishes and doing chores is a bare minimum. OP's sister's boyfriend does sound like a tool. So yeah, good for you, OP. Hopefully your mom will come around. Anyways, let's move on to the next story. This one is from user Mura Furp. His mom and I are divorced and I don't have much of a relationship. Cordial, but indifferent. Our son is now 11 and my ex remarried a few years ago, but she was with the guy for some time. We have 50-50. She requested that she have him for two weeks for vacation. I agreed, even though this ate into my time with him. Apparently, he got into it with stepdad and he got grounded for a week. Well, most of that week is my week with him before he leaves on vacation with them. And she asked me to see to it that his grounding continues through my time. I won't see him for three weeks. I am not saying not to punish him. Punish him when he's on their time. I have no problems with him when he's with me. I refused. I already made plans to make most of the days that I have him and I'm sure as hell not going to cancel those plans because he mouthed off to stepdad. I don't even care much for stepdad anyways. What I do with my son on my time is my business and vice versa. Also, I don't want to set precedent where I am the parent who has to do both sides of discipline. Am I the a-hole for not honoring my son's punishment? And the community says everybody sucks here. So now, let's move on to the update. My son called him a freaking a-hole. My ex calls him the same thing when they fight. Her words, not mine. He learned it from her, not me. I don't open share my dislike for her husband. Maybe an eye roll, but I'm too corporate and professional to do it in front of my son. Update 2. This is hilarious. My son's best friend, mom, emailed us an invite for a sleepover, which is on my day. I was going to see if my son wanted to go, but my ex's husband said my son could not go as he was grounded. I can react in so many ways. Update 3. I told my ex to cancel her vacation as my son will not be going because it affects my custody time. Yes, I told her it was okay, but after her husband's stunt of saying he couldn't do the sleepover, which was on my day anyways, I had to crack the whip. Let those two eat each other alive. They deserve each other. I don't agree with the community. I don't think OP is the a-hole. If that's how the wife treats her husband in front of the kid, then you can't get mad at the kid for doing exactly what his mom is doing. 
in this kind of situation, if you're going to discipline the child and it affects the time that the other partner has the child, then you need to clear that with the partner before putting a punishment in place. Also, these guys need to go over some ground rules about authority and who gets to punish the kid when. But again, that's just my opinion and let's move on to the next story. This one's from user over this wedding s. I recently got engaged to the man of my dreams in April 2019, set to be married in September of 2020. Even before we got engaged, my fiancé and I agreed that we were going to keep it on the smaller side and only invite our close friends and family. Now, I have four other siblings that I'm not close to. I only talk to one and that's putting it lightly. I've chosen not to invite the remaining three and only invite the one that I speak to. My mother wasn't particularly pleased, but she understood at the time. We already went through BS with his side of the family due to the fact that I didn't want to invite everyone from his side of the family, which would be an additional 60 plus people to our list. My fiance and I had already had a list for everyone he wanted to invite on his side of the family and mine. It was a huge thing where we eventually compromised on inviting a large portion, but not all. They essentially threatened to not help pay for the wedding, so I felt a bit bullied into giving in. Flash forward to the past few weeks. My mother has had a falling out with the one sibling I speak to and now wants me to invite one of the ones who I have literally no relationship with. I've told her no many times and to please be civil and respect my wishes. Today, she threw the fact that we are inviting my fiancé's family to the wedding, though it was a different scenario in my opinion, and said that she isn't coming to the wedding unless I invite him. At this point, I'm over all of it. I haven't been able to enjoy being engaged because it's been family drama and I'm not even looking forward to planning the wedding. We have planned a large portion and most of everything has been paid out of our pocket. I suggested we just cancel the damn thing and elope to my fiancé and he agreed. Would I be the a-hole to cancel it and just elope? And the community says, not the a-hole. Okay, now let's move on to the update. My fiancé and I talked it through, the pros and cons, etc. We both realized how unhappy we were with how things were going and decided that we were going to cancel the wedding and move forward with eloping. We decided that we didn't want it to be just us, but a small group of family and friends as well. We were both ecstatic, but also extremely worried at how our parents were going to take it, especially considering our guest list went from 120 people to 20. But we were both committed and he decided to tell his parents and I would tell mine. Surprisingly, his parents were so supportive and extremely ecstatic that we were getting eloped. They were even more excited when we let them know we wanted them there and they booked their flight soon after. They also handled telling their families and friends in Texas that we were eloping and to get over it. So that saved us the trouble. His other family was very supportive and wished us the best. My father also was incredibly supportive and couldn't wait to be there. My mother on the other hand was furious. The phone call to her started off calmly enough and I did let her know before beginning the conversation that she most likely wouldn't enjoy this, but I pressed forward. I told her our reasons, our stresses, how we felt disrespected and disregarding concerning everything. I laid it all out in a calm and collected manner. Once finished, she was very quiet and simply said, all right. I knew immediately that I was pretty well effed but we ended the phone call with her stating she understood. Less than 24 hours later, she texts me asking if my brother, whom one of our biggest stressors was about, was invited. I was mad because I had just had this conversation with her and explicitly told her who was invited and etc. I responded back with a simple no and that my father, grandmother and herself were invited. Well. S hit the fan. She sent me a wall of texts calling me all sorts of name, throwing my fiance's family in my face and how we took their side. How I never truly gave an S about her feelings, all the good stuff. I remained calmed and before sending each response, consulted my fiance as to not sound like a total B. Long story short, 
She said unless my brother is invited, she won't be coming. So I told her not to come. I was over it and stopped responding to her texts. Four days she texted me, saying all the same as before and kept asking if my brother was invited. I responded once and told her that until she apologized, she won't, that I wouldn't be seeing or speaking to her about anything regarding the wedding. I offered an open seat to our wedding, whether she shows up or not is completely up to her. My fiancé and I have already booked a small venue for our eloping and are more excited planning this than our previous wedding and are looking forward to our future. Good for you, OP. Your mom sounds like she was trying to manipulate you or guilt tripping you into doing what she wanted. She sucks and if she wants to go to the wedding or not, it's on her. So congratulations on eloping and the best to you in the future. Alright, now let's move on to the next story. This one is from user Sad Stepmom. I have two children from a previous relationship, Danielle, 11, and Elliot, 7. My husband John loves them as his own, but also has a 15-year-old daughter, Alicia, from a previous relationship. We've been married four years, but I've only seen her a handful of times. Firstly, because she spends most of her time with her mother and also because she attends an elite boarding school for girls, so the opportunity to see her is very rare. Over the summer, me and the kids went on holiday to Spain for three weeks. John was supposed to come, but he was snowed under with work commitments. However, when he told Alicia, she said she's always wanted to go there and she begged him to convince me to let her come, which I did, but her mom had to pay for her flight place in the hotel. It all went well at first, but a problem started when it turned out Alicia didn't pack anywhere near three weeks worth of clothing, meaning that initially she had to borrow some of mine, which were oversized. And then when we went shopping, I couldn't afford anywhere near the sort of clothing she likes. And she cried about having to make do with cheap stuff. She then phoned up her mom crying, saying I was being unfair to her for making her wear clothes that she wasn't used to. She also continuously tried to persuade me to buy her alcohol. We had another row when she met some boys from the same country as us in a restaurant bar. She was cuddling with one of them, and when Elliot was tired and we needed to go home, she tried to stay with them and go back to where they were staying. As her guardian on the trip, I was not prepared to allow her to go home with a group of boys we've never met in a foreign country. She threw a huge tantrum at me about this when we got home, saying what's the point in coming on holiday if I won't let her have fun. Finally, Alicia was sulking throughout the journey home and took to trying to antagonize Danielle, asking her if she's ready to have no friends when she starts secondary school, calling her ugly and things like that. I stopped this immediately and she sulked even more. When we got back, I told John how difficult Alicia had been throughout the trip and said that I wouldn't take her on a trip with me again. He insisted that none of what she did was that bad, but I insisted on speaking to Alicia's mom on the phone and telling her everything her daughter had done. She defended her daughter completely and insisted that everything she did was what teenage girls do. I was shocked. But after John and Leanne, his ex, spoke over the phone, he has been defending her too, insisting that she's really nice if I get to know her and things like that. I've not said that I'll never be in the same room as her again, I've just said that I won't take someone that badly behaved on holiday with me again. But John says that I'm overreacting and that I should give her another chance, which I have no intention of doing. Am I the a-hole for telling my husband I won't take my stepdaughter on holiday again? And the community says, not the a-hole. I agree. Now, let's move on to the update. Thanks for all these responses, they gave me a lot of food for thought. While I still stand by my decision and won't take Alicia on holidays unless John is there with me, a lot of people said that I haven't taken enough time to actually get to know my stepdaughter, which to be honest, is true. But as said above, there are reasons for this. Even though she's a very smart kid, girls have to pass very difficult entry exams to go to that school even if their parents can afford it. I think there are better ways to bring out her potential than boarding school. It is of course Leanne's decision, but it isn't something I'd have chosen for her or any of my kids. 
As someone of the comments here have suggested, it is entirely possible she feels unloved and also unwelcomed in our household. Which isn't true at all. Which is why I told John that I will make the effort to get to know Alicia properly and actually suggested that we invite her here next time she's home from boarding and hope to spend as much time with her as I can. Well, that seems like a proper and sensible solution, getting to know the kid better. Also, I do think they're right. Maybe the kid does feel unloved because she's the only one in a boarding school. Maybe the mom is one of those moms. I don't know. Anyways, now we move on to the final post. This one is from user WebDBW. My parents are pretty wealthy. I'm 26 and from 21 to 25, I was in and out of rehabs. I was abusing so many different kinds of drugs and I wasted so much money. I OD'd once and it destroyed my family to watch me go through that. I am intensely ashamed of who I was as a person and I have been sober for almost a year. My parents are now approaching their late 60s and have started finalizing their wills and inheritance. Yesterday, they sat me down and told me that I will not be getting any of the inheritance as they don't trust me not to relapse with all that money suddenly in my possession and as a result, my siblings will be getting my share of the money. I was pretty upset about this and said that they were going to make my siblings rich while I would get nothing from it and that wasn't fair. I was almost yelling at this point. They told me to calm down, but I was too upset to listen and I left. I called my brother and sister after I left and told them what my parents said and they said that it was their choice and there wasn't anything they could do. I accused them of just wanting all the money for themselves and not caring about what happened to me. Today I have my dad texting me that they are worried about me and disappointed in my behavior yesterday. I talked to my sponsor and he said that while anger is understandable, I have to do everything in my power not to ruin the trust I've built with my family over the past year and acting like an a-hole addict won't help me. Sometimes I still have trouble with my reactions to things now that I'm sober. However, I don't feel as though I'm entirely unjustified here. Am I the a-hole for being upset that my siblings are getting part of an inheritance but I'm not because I'm a recovering addict? And the community said, yes, you are an a-hole. So now we move on to the update. After what happened with my parents, I won't lie, I relapsed. I had a weekend where I blacked out. I remember getting back to my apartment and all the drugs and booze I had bought was gone. And it was a Monday morning. It was a lot of stuff. I scared myself so much, I ended up calling my parents saying that they were right and I remembered everyone's advice on my last post and I apologized for how I treated them and that they were right in not giving me any of their money. I'm now three weeks sober and I took Reddit's advice and made a compromise with my parents in regards to my inheritance. If I remain at least five years sober and submit to a bi-monthly drug test, they will reconsider my part of the money. I hope they do reconsider. I know I have a lot of work to do and I still have a lot of selfishness to overcome but I wanted to thank everyone for helping me try to realize that. Here's to three weeks and more. Well that sounds like a perfectly good solution. A compromise where he gets checked and you know he rebuilds the trust with taking bi-monthly tests and a five year run. So here's to hoping OP can do it. And so we've reached the end of the video. I truly hope you guys liked it. This is a far longer video than I'm used to making, but I thought reaching 5k is not something that happens every day, so this is a good way to celebrate it. I truly hope once again you guys did enjoy it. And if you did, click like, it really helps me out. Also, if you do enjoy this content, click subscribe and become a part of this community. And don't forget to visit the Lost Genre subreddit where you can cross post stories for me to feature in videos or write your own like some people have. And having said all that, I'll see you guys in the next video.